Om Magana Tamandasi again again in Salakaya Chakshri Malatan Janita Zamai Sigurve Namaha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutali. Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachani. Nervasesha Shunyuari Paska Chade Satar. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Adaita Gadana Sivasadi Go Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Maharaj Pariksit's question is very significant. He does not ask about any ordinary thing, he asks about the principles of religion whereby one attains the ultimate goal of life, pure devotional service to the Lord. After hearing all about the glorious qualities of Maharaj Pariksit, Maharaj er, Yudhisthir became enthused to know more and more. Therefore he inquired about the actual principles of religion whereby one attains devotional service to the Lord. Real religion is not a matter of formalities, the rules and regulations. Real religion is devotional service to the Lord. Real religion refers to the innate quality of the living being, which is to serve the Supreme Lord. We are not meant for serving simply our families, our children, our society, our government, these things are only serviceable in relationship to Krishna. In this chapter, it is specifically outlined how that a woman is supposed to serve a husband who is not fallen. And Prabhupada directly states that a woman is not to serve a, a husband who is fallen, who is not following the principles of Krishna consciousness. This chapter very clearly delineates the ideal organization of society. It is called Vanashram Dharma and divides society into four classes, Brahman, Chatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra. It also sets forth a system of samskaras. The Garbhaduks Samskara is the ceremony for begetting a child and must be observed by the higher section of people, namely the Dwijas or the twice born. Only those who actually follow the Garbhadakshan Samskara are actually twice born. Those who deviate from these principles are called Dwijabandhu, friends of Brahmana. The principal occupations for a brahmana are deity worship, teaching others how to worship the deity, studying the Vedic literatures, teaching the Vedic literatures, accepting charity from others, and again giving charity to others. To be a truly qualified brahmana, one must make his living in, from these six occupations. One who does the work of a sudra and has the qualifications of a sudra should be known as sudra no matter what family he was born in. This principle is very clearly emphasized by Srila Prabhupada. The duty of a chatriya is to give protection to the citizens and levy taxes upon them, but he is forbidden to tax the brahmanas. Those who are engaged in the occupation of Krishna consciousness, therefore, should be exempt from government taxes. The Vaishyas should cultivate the land, produce food grains, and protect the cows. Whereas the Sudras, who by quality never become Brahmanas, Chatras, or Vaishyas, should serve the three higher castes and be satisfied. This principle of being satisfied with one's position is very important. 
One obtains his position, whether considered by birth or by qualification, by the grace of the Lord. To be dissatisfied with what Krishna has given one is not surrender. To be satisfied with what Krishna has allotted to me or to you or to ourselves is always surrender. It is the same principle as being grateful for the present moment as it is. The present moment comes to us not by chance, not by our hard endeavor, it comes to us by the grace of Krishna. Therefore, to be satisfied with the present moment as it is, and to seek to use the present moment as it is in the best way for Krishna's service that Krishna gives you the intelligence to do, that is perfect. Our responsibility is not what we get, but how we use what we get. Therefore, a, a man of great wealth and great expertise and great intelligence, he has a much greater responsibility to engage all these gifts in Krishna's service. To whom much is given, much is required. And to whom little is given, little is required. Lord Jesus told a story about two people who came to the temple. One was very rich and one was very poor. The rich man took a gold coin out of his pocket and very showy, in a showy manner, dropped it in the box. He made sure everyone saw and heard his gold coin. The poor man came and he only had a penny or a one pice and he dropped the one pice in the box. Lord Jesus said to his disciples, verily I tell you a parable. This rich man he has gotten his reward already. This poor man has gotten an unlimited reward from the Lord and his disciples were very confused. He said, how is this possible? The rich man gave a gold coin and he only gave one pice. The Lord then went on to explain to his disciples, this rich man has given out of his abundance. He has very great riches, and so the gold coin means nothing to him. But the poor man has given everything he had, which only goes to illustrate the point. The Lord doesn't look at how much you give. He looks at how much you keep back. We are not responsible for what we get, but we are responsible with how we use it. Let us become very determined to use whatever we have, either great or small, in the Lord's service and not for our own sense gratification. It is a fundamental principle of spiritual life that whatever one does for the service of the Lord, whether it is very great or very small, that is eternal and will always be for the benefit of the devotee. But whatever one does for one's sense gratification is sure to bring misery and hardship. Just as if one takes in a little bit of poison, one is sure to become sick or die. For the spirit soul, sense gratification is poison. Why is that? Because sense gratification makes us think, I am this body. And the more we are encased in thinking, I am this body, the more we are doomed to repetition of birth and death. Jamanacharya was in his early life a sense enjoyer. He had a prostitute who he served but when he became a devotee, he said, now that I think of sex life, 
I spit at the thought. We have to become disgusted with the idea of sense gratification. Because sense gratification is what binds us to this material world. In fact, we can judge our advancement in Krishna consciousness by how we are becoming disgusted with sense gratification. Are there any questions? These questions are not planted. <laughs> Bhaktivedanta, you're talking about being satisfied in whatever station that Krishna puts you in. Uh, how's that reconciled with um, the, the impetus of Varnashram is to move people upward and uh, everyone's to try to develop uh, the qualities of a Brahman like cleanliness and peacefulness and all. How, how are those things reconciled? To be satisfied with the present moment as it is does not mean that we don't work for change. Whatever opportunities Krishna provides to us in the present moment for change, we can accept that and we can act for that. For instance, in the present moment, we have a choice whether we are clean or not. It may be more difficult in a certain circumstance to be clean than to be dirty, but the possibility is still there and one can act for the quality that he wants to become. One may have to walk a quarter of a mile to the well to get water, but he still has the choice whether he goes or not. Hare Krishna, Srila Bhakti Bhaji, a devotee has entered in the Grast Ashram. So there are some responsibilities towards the family. Everybody is demanding that it's your responsibility to fill our needs. How can one balance in that situation? It is a mistake to think that the duty of mother or father is to supply all the wants of their children or dependents. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, it is the duty of the father or mother to deliver the child or the ward from repeated birth and death. Therefore, it is their duty to supply what is needed for Krishna consciousness, but not what is needed for sense gratification. Thank you. Dhaniwad.